Unseen shadows. The universe was vast, punctuated by pinpricks of light, each one a distant star, a beacon from galaxies afar. Amidst the sprawling canvas of the cosmos sat the rebel base. It wasn't grand or extravagant. Its beauty lay in its unassuming nature. Compact modules linked by bridging tunnels and satellite antennae rose like bristling thorns against the inky backdrop. It was a hidden jewel, a place of hope and resistance, its location known to only a trusted few. At this tranquil edge of space, danger slithered forth, undetected and malevolent. Two colossal drac behemoths, constructs of nightmarish design, steadily made their approach. Their surfaces, dark and matte, absorbed any ambient light, rendering them near invisible against the obsidian curtain of space. The behemoths were unlike any other vessel in the galaxy. Their presence was not announced with a blaze or a roar, but with a chilling, silent intent. They drew closer to the rebel base, their gargantuan forms casting imperceptible shadows on the cosmos. Within the base, all seemed normal. LED lights blinked rhythmically, consoles beeped occasionally, and the sensors, the first line of defense, appeared to be functioning at optimal levels. Crew members took turns observing the vast screen displays, ensuring that their sanctuary remained undisturbed. Laughter and casual banter echoed in the hallways as off-duty personnel shared stories and plans for when the war would end. Their tales filled with hope for a brighter future, free from the oppressive grip of the drac. Unbeknownst to them, that very grip was stealthily inching closer. Meanwhile, in the expansive void outside, the lone patrolling fighter ship, the Silver Falcon, glided effortlessly. Its pilot, Lieutenant Varus, was a seasoned warrior. His eyes, accustomed to the variances in the cosmic panorama, continuously scanned the vistas for any anomalies. A simple patrol, just another day's task in the vastness of space. The stillness was usually a sign of peace, a welcome respite. But today, as Varus steered the Silver Falcon through a cloud of space dust, his sensors blipped an unusual pattern. He squinted, leaning closer to the dashboard, trying to decipher the abnormality. And then, like ghostly apparitions emerging from a fog, the outlines of the drac behemoths began to materialize on his screen. They were still distant, but their massive forms were unmistakable and they were headed straight for the rebel base. A cold surge of realization jolted through him. Control, this is Silver Falcon. We've got a situation, he shouted into the communicator, his voice tense with urgency. Two drac behemoths are approaching the base and they're coming in stealth. Sensors at base might not detect them. Static answered him for a split second before a frantic voice responded. Silver Falcon, confirm your readings. Two behemoths, you say? Confirmed, Varus replied pushing his thrusters to max, racing back towards the base to lend any help he could. I'm returning to the base, but raise the alarms now. We have very little time. As his warning rang out, the behemoths, sensing their cover might be blown, increased their pace, the intent of their mission clear. Strike fast, strike hard, and give the rebels no quarter. Back at the rebel base, the mood shifted from relaxed camaraderie to palpable tension. Their sanctuary, which had always been a beacon of hope, was now under the looming shadow of the formidable drac forces. Awakening Chaos The heartbeats before chaos were eerily silent. Then like a thunderclap tearing through a calm night, alarms echoed through the rebel base's metallic corridors. The once peaceful red and green LEDs that dotted control panels shifted to an urgent, pulsing red. The deafening siren was a brutal awakening, a reminder that war was at their doorstep. The hangars, usually bustling with routine checks and maintenance, turned into a hive of frenzied activity. Crew members threw open cabinets, grabbing flight suits, helmets, and weapons. Engineers and droids scuttled about, ensuring ships were ready for an immediate launch. The usually disciplined process of preparation was replaced by urgency, but no fear. Every second counted. Fighter pilots, realizing the gravity of the situation, wasted no time. They buckled in, the cockpits of their ships sealing shut with a pneumatic hiss. Engines, once cold, roared to life in a brilliant display of blue and white flames. One by one, the ships levitated, turned, and then, with a flash of thrust, zoomed out of the hangars, ready to meet the looming drac threat. In the heart of the base, Within the fortress-like walls of the command center, 
A tall figure stood stoically, watching the screens that painted a grim picture. General Arcos, a war-hardened veteran with scars that told tales of countless battles, was not one to falter in the face of danger. He adjusted the collar of his uniform and cleared his throat. Communications, send out a priority one distress call to all rebel fleets and outposts. Drac forces are upon us. A young officer nodded, fingers flying across her console. Broadcasting now, General. Arcos turned to face the rest of the room. Defense teams to your stations. Gunners, man the turrets. We'll give our fighters the cover they need. He continued, his voice commanding but not panicked. Evac teams, prepare for immediate evacuation if needed. Throughout the command center, his orders were met with swift nods and acknowledgments. In the midst of impending catastrophe, the rebels showcased what they were best known for, unity in adversity and impeccable discipline. As Arcos was giving orders, Commander Talia, in charge of security and surveillance, beckoned him over. Her face, usually calm and collected, wore an expression of concern. General. She began, pointing to a holographic display of the base's security systems. Our outer sensors show no signs of malfunction. They're operating at 100%, but they miss two drac behemoths approaching. This isn't an oversight. It's sabotage. General Arcos frowned, the gravity of the revelation dawning on him. You're suggesting we have a traitor among us? Taelia nodded gravely. It seems so, sir. This kind of manipulation requires access, knowledge, and intent. The general's gaze hardened. Once we repel this attack, we'll root out this traitor. But for now, focus on the task at hand. But as he spoke, the thought gnawed at him. Treachery within their ranks? That was more dangerous than any external enemy. If they survived this onslaught, they'd have to turn their attention inward to cleanse the shadows lurking in their midst. Outside, the first wave of rebel fighters met the vast expanse of space, their formations tight and determined. But looming on the horizon were the Drac behemoths, monstrous and relentless. The stage was set for a confrontation that would test the mettle of every individual aboard the rebel base. Desperate Defense Above the rebel base, the cold expanse of space became a battlefield. The stars, once calm spectators, were now the backdrop to a desperate skirmish. The lone fighter that had initially spotted the Drac behemoths sped towards them, its pilot determined, if not a little reckless. The fighter's systems hummed, and its weapons locked onto the massive ship in its sights. Inside the fighter's cockpit, the pilot, Lieutenant Kale, adjusted his targeting systems. For the rebellion, he whispered to himself, fingers poised over the firing controls. But before he could unleash his ship's arsenal, a beam of incandescent energy emanated from one of the behemoths. The fighter didn't stand a chance. With a brilliant flare, the ship was no more, reduced to debris in mere moments. Witnessing the fighter's swift obliteration, the other rebel ships quickly formed squadrons, attempting to mount a coordinated attack. But the behemoths, with their advanced weaponry and nearly impenetrable shields, were a force to be reckoned with. Rebel ships danced around them, firing bursts of energy, trying to find a weak point. But with each passing second, another rebel vessel was picked off, its sacrifice only further highlighting the difference in might. Inside the rebel base's command center, an officer tried desperately to establish a communication line to the behemoths. Drac vessels, this is rebel base Alpha Point. We wish to negotiate a ceasefire. We are willing to surrender to prevent further loss of life. Please respond. But the only response was the silent continuation of the Drac assault, their actions speaking louder than any words. General Arcos watched the grim spectacle unfold on the command center's screens. His face was ashen, the weight of command heavy on his shoulders. Around him, the mood was somber, the room filled with an oppressive silence broken only by the occasional blip of a radar or a whispered order. Turning to Commander Taelia, Arcos's voice carried a note of defeat, but also determination. Initiate full evacuation protocols. We can't hold them off. It's time to save as many as we can. Taelia, ever the stoic figure, nodded. I'll oversee the evacuations. We have escape pods and smaller ships that can scatter and make it harder for the Drac to track. As she relayed orders, Arcos made one more plea over the communications channel, his voice echoing the desperation of their situation. All rebel ships disengage and return to base. We are initiating full evacuation. Protect the escape routes at all costs. But even as the order was given, a new hope emerged. 
From one of the hangars, two sleek arrow-shaped vessels emerged, their design contrasting sharply with the bulkier rebel ships. Their engines shimmered with a unique hue, signaling the presence of advanced FTL drives. As they maneuvered into open space, they darted around, evading drac fire with agility that was nothing short of awe-inspiring. The command center crew watched with bated breath as the two vessels danced their deadly ballet. Then, just as a drac beam came perilously close to one of the ships, both engaged their FTL drives, disappearing in a brilliant streak of light, leaving the battlefield behind. A murmur of hope ran through the command center. Those ships carried vital information, data, and possibly high-ranking rebel officials. Their escape was a small victory in what seemed like an inevitable defeat. Arcos, looking on, allowed himself a small, grim smile. The fight isn't over, he murmured. But as the drac behemoths bore down on the rebel base, that fight was about to become even more challenging. Drax Fury in the midst of space, the rebel base, which had once been a beacon of hope for many, now stood surrounded by two monstrous drac behemoths. The giant ships, casting a long shadow upon the base, seemed almost impatient in their silent wait. The base, in contrast, looked fragile, its defenses weakened and morale crushed. Inside what remained of the command center of the rebel base, Commander Arcos sat heavily in his chair, exhaustion evident in every line of his face. The room around him was bathed in a red hue from the emergency lights, casting eerie shadows on the walls. Monitors flickered intermittently, some already gone dark. The weight of impending doom hung thick in the air. Taking a deep breath, he reached for the communication console, his fingers hovering above the distress button. The few crew members who were left turned their attention to him, waiting for his next move. This is Rebel Base Alpha Point's last call he began, voice trembling but resolute. To anyone listening, we are under siege. The Drac are here, and they have breached our defenses. We suspect sabotage. Someone on the inside allowed them to get this close undetected. Trust no one. He paused, swallowing hard. If you hear this, make your way to Omega Base. That's the new rallying point. Stay away from here, and remember, there's a traitor among us. Do not... His words were cut short by a massive explosion that shook the base. As Arcos was thrown off his feet, the communication line went dead, the screen turning to static. Outside, the two drac behemoths had begun their methodical annihilation of the rebel base. Arcs of destructive energy crisscrossed space, turning structures into ash and metal into molten fragments. Escape pods and smaller vessels attempted to flee, but they were picked off with chilling efficiency. In mere minutes, what had been a proud symbol of resistance was reduced to a scattering of debris amidst the vast expanse of space. Once the last echo of the destruction faded, the behemoths, having completed their grim task, slowly started their retreat. The space around them now held a graveyard's silence, broken only by the occasional piece of debris pinging against their impenetrable hulls. On the bridge of the lead drac behemoth, the atmosphere was starkly different. The dimly lit space was dominated by a massive view screen, now showcasing the remnants of the rebel base. Drac officers moved with purpose, each at their station, maintaining the behemoth's immense systems. At the center of the bridge stood the Drac commander, a towering figure with scales shimmering in the muted light. He observed the destruction for a few moments, his expression inscrutable. Then, with a nod of satisfaction, he turned to his communication officer. Open a channel to Sector Commander Carvan. The officer quickly complied, and the image of Carvan, the mastermind of this assault, appeared on screen. Report. Carvan's voice was cold, expecting success. The mission is complete. The commander replied succinctly. Rebel base Alpha Point is no more. A pause lingered, Carvan's eyes narrowing. The traitor's sabotage of the sensors? It worked flawlessly. The commander responded, a hint of pride in his voice. They had no idea we were approaching. Excellent. Carvon replied, satisfaction evident. And Commander? He added. Well done. As the transmission ended, the Drac commander allowed himself a rare, fleeting smile. The might of the Drac had been showcased, and the rebels were given a brutal reminder of the vast gulf that stood between them. In the cold, unforgiving void of space, the ashes of the destroyed rebel base bore silent testimony to the Drac's unyielding fury.